Everybody, welcome to D-Lab. On the bench today, got another challenge. It's a Johnson Ranger transmitter. Comes from a ham in the Detroit area. He said the Ranger operated, but he's having some strange issues like modulation cutting out and some erratic metering of the radio. All right, so I'm sure we've got quite the challenge on our hands. Let's give it an inspection and see what we find. All right, let's give this Ranger a good inspection. Front panel wise, it really looks nice. The finish is in good shape. VFO is as smooth as silk. That's a good thing because tearing those apart and fixing that vernier is a job. Looks like most of the lettering is all intact. It's a good looking one. All right, let's take a look in the top. Now, this is obviously a kit Ranger. You can see somebody's been in there putting some markings on the VFO. It's all there, but there's also some extra things there, like this. This used to be the 5R4 rectifier, and this used to be the 6AX4 rectifier. Somebody did this diode art. Beautiful. Giant push-to-talk relay. All right, let's see if there's anything on the other side over here. Nope, everything there looks pretty good. Let's flip it around and take a look at it at a different angle. All right, back side, got our power transformer. Here is your output loading coil. You can see there's a little bit of damage here. It must have got squashed at one time. 6146 output tube. Back side of the modulator section, meter, VFO compartment. And yeah, the fun stuff down there. Now you'll notice that this one does not have the keyer platform that was in later models of the Ranger. You know, in a way that's a bummer, but in a way it's a good thing because I can get right to the wiring of that function switch. All right, let's look underside. Bottom side tour of the Ranger. Looks pretty much stock. Still has a lot of those old waxy drippers in it. You have to get those out. Dried up electrolytics. High voltage cap is original. That all needs to be changed up here. Right there is the VFO crystal select and spotting switch. I immediately noticed that somebody's been in here. There's a cut wire. So that might be part of the metering issues that he's seeing. I'll have to investigate that a little bit closer. Oh yeah, we got a lot of caps to change in this one. A lot of old electrolytics. Once we put the new ones in, she'll look 100% better. One thing that I always check, there's an access hole in the chassis down here. I take my little inspection scope and I can look inside and see if that old 18K Chernobyl resistor is there. And yes, it is. So that has to come out immediately. So let's give the Ranger a quick operational check out. Now this thing has been on in the recent past so I did not bring it up on a Variac. You can see she's lit up. So let's check for the presence of oscillator current. Nothing. How about buffer? Looks like there's something there so I should have grid and I don't. Okay. The thing that's strange is when I'm going to phone, even though it has push to talk, I'm hearing that high voltage. Almost makes me wondering. We got plate current. Nope. Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and key it. Okay, good. And now, see we have grid. Okay, if I go out of that mode and go to my zero, I don't have grid. So yeah, there's something goofy going on there. How about modulation? Oh yeah, we got some modulation. I'm putting out about uh, 45, 50 watts over there. So she's operating, but it appears as though the push to talk system is kind of goofed up. Because I should be able to go to zero and set grid, especially, from my output tube, and there's nothing there. 
All right, so I think what we'll do the first thing, I'm going to get in here and fix up that push to talk circuit, change the 18K resistor in the VFO because I don't trust that thing at all, and see if we can get the push to talk to operate normally and get the metering and the VFO zero functions to operate. Should be a lot of fun. All right, so before I get in here, and repair the push to talk system and change that resistor in the VFO I wanted to point out something of great importance okay especially for safety remember that big giant relay I showed you down there that is the push to talk relay which is actually wired per the Johnson manual okay and what they do is they use a voltage dividing network off of their 300 volt supply and your microphone actually grounds that line which pulls in the contact of the relay so the coil is like a 10,000 ohm coil something like that so if you take your meter you go to pin 2 of your mic connector there's 192 volts in your microphone and when you're keying it it's pulling that to ground super dangerous situation okay so I routinely put in one of my K1 push-to-talk modules, and this will be around 16 volts DC. All right, first thing I'm going to do is get this diode artwork out of here. Somebody put a lot of time and effort into that. It's pretty cool, really. But I prefer to keep the 5R4 tube installed. And then, of course... The 6AX5 tube will be replaced by the K1 module. So both of these can be returned to the owner. He could display them on a shelf or something, okay? So I need to get this guy out of the way. We're going to pull these tubes, remove the cover so we can see inside the VFO. So looking a little closer at this push to talk system, it does not appear as though it has been wired correctly per the Johnson manual. So you got these two wires that look like they go to the function switch, but these two on the other side were also supposed to go to the function switch, and they don't. They take off on this little white two conductor wire and tear across the chassis. So that may be why the metering is goofy, is because the intent of this was to switch the negative bias and the 120 volt switching for your external TR relay. It's not wired that way. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. I'll keep these wires so I can trace where they're going. And then we're going to remove this shaft and pull the side off the VFO cover. All right, here we go. Last screw of the VFO compartment. And here comes Mr. Chernobyl. There he is, right down there. That resistor is famous for overheating and causing a forest fire in your VFO cage. If you get a Ranger, make sure that that old cruster has been replaced. Right, if you look real close in there, you can see this one has actually been changed in the past, but look, see there? It's not even connected. And there's another resistor behind it. I think that is actually the original. So, <laughs> wow, I don't even know how this thing it worked at all. So, yep, that's what's going on. That's the old 18K resistor back there. I'll pull this out in a minute so you can see it. But the reason this has probably happened is this is a very difficult area to work in, okay? This is your voltage regulator tube, and this resistor goes to a pin that's all the way up there and then it's soldered down here to the terminal board so when they built this obviously this cage wasn't in the way so they had access but unless you want to pull the front panel off your Ranger and pull this cage there's only one good way to access this okay if you can't get your iron in there you can't get your pliers in there the best thing to do is to come over here and put a notch in the aluminum to allow access to that pin. When you put the cover back on, you'll never see the notch. That's what I'm gonna have to do here. So what I'm gonna do is take my Dremel with a cutoff wheel, 
I'm going to protect this area so nothing falls in. I'm going to slice and dice the aluminum, make myself a little access slot, and then we'll get back to business of changing out the resistor. Well, there we go. Nachomatic. Now I can reach that pin easily on the regulator tube and do a good install of the new current limiting resistor. Well, there they are. Two 18K cigars getting ready to go in the garbage. And I have easy access now to put in the new one. All right, there is the new 20K resistor installed. Johnson used a 18K stock, but this is a 20K 5 watt. Perfect replacement, it'll last forever. Now while you're in here, there's a good opportunity to clean the switches. And of course get all the contamination out and sure enough check those tubes you don't want to put back together with bad tubes right well, i temporarily put the vfo cover back on because i'm going to work on the push to talk system so this is the k1 module which goes in the place of the 6ax5 and provides the push to talk switching so i need to interface this to the function switch mission complete I've got the new K1 push to talk switching system installed, wired into the function switch. I was able to reuse some of the wiring that the previous installation had. I installed a 5R4 rectifier tube. Everything's back together. Now let's take a look at the push to talk voltage at the rear of the radio. So, with the old Johnson system, if you remember, we had about 192 volts on the mic switch. Now, we got just a little under 17 volts. So that goes to the relay on the K1 board. So now when you key your microphone, you're going to ground this pin and that will put her into transmit mode. Okay, let's check out the operation of the Ranger with the new K1 switching system. All right, we're going to run through the tune up and transmitting of the Ranger with the K1 system installed. So I've sold, geez, at least 100 of these systems, okay? And I'd say 99% of people have good luck, and some people have some issues. So I want to clarify what you would get after installing the K1 system. So originally, if you're in AM mode, you would have to toggle from phone to standby every time you transmit. Or if you're in CW, same thing. Standby to CW every time you transmit, which puts a lot of wear and tear on the function switch. So out of the Johnson Ranger manual, this is there push to talk system with that old relay that you saw initially on this video okay my k1 system takes the same concept the same switching same schematic but eliminates the high voltage switching okay so what you're seeing here is the previous version of the push to talk switching my system simply lowers the voltage and makes it safe so if you follow these instructions in the Johnson manual the push talk module should work just like this one did and if it didn't that means you've got something wrong in your wiring or somebody has been in there playing around with that function switch okay that's always the case all right let's tune up the ranger so we're going to start off in standby mode all right in this position you can go to zero and if you look we're an oscillator you can see your oscillator current there's your buffer and here is your grid okay so you're seeing all that metering working now if you go to plate there is some idle current that's the screens of the 6146 that are on but it's not pulling any plate current and there's no output at this point okay so in standby you should have no output but yet your grid buffer oscillator etc work all right now we're going to go to grid and I'm going to turn off zero now we're going to go to phone. You can see my grid current didn't move. My plate current is still idling. We've got mod current now because the screens are on to the uh, modulator tubes. Okay. So now I'm going to key the transmitter. Remember, I'm in phone position now. VFO spot is off. And I'm going to key it. There's my grid current. And look, we got output. There's my plate. You can dip it. Unkey. She shuts down like it should. Okay. If I go to standby, 
it won't key. But you can hear the relay pulling in, all right? So all that is exactly how the Ranger operated before using the function switch. This system simply goes in parallel, guys, with a function switch, takes wear and tear off of that. All right, let's check CW because some of you told me that, well, I got it hooked up, my phone works great, it'll key up, but I, I've lost CW operation. Well, let's verify that, all right? So I'm gonna go to standby. We have no output. There's CW mode. Now, just like you're hitting your key, that's like going to zero, watch. Got output, okay? If I go to standby, no output. That is how it worked initially. That was not interrupted with the push to talk system. So if your CW is not working, or if you have other flaky issues between phone and your zeroing, guess what? It's that function switch. It's always been a problem with the Ranger. They fail often. You could have things wrong with that switch that make it appear as though the K1's not working. I hope this kind of clarifies things. All right, so the little ranger is on the road to recovery. The goal of this video was to repair the push to talk switching, obviously address the VFO issues, and get the metering working on the radio. So at this point, it is functional, but I will have to recap it, okay? The other thing I really wanted to cover was these problems that you guys are experiencing installing the K1 relay system, okay? So if you get one of these, don't give up, don't get frustrated. Email me. We can work our way through it. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for your support. We're out.